The boom is built on credit. In 1929, six billion dollars of goods are bought on credit. But 80% of Americans have no savings at all. Some stocks are valued at 50 times what they're really worth. A giant bubble just ready to burst. By October 1929, the inevitable happens. The stock market loses 12 times more money in three weeks than the US government uses in a year. The entire country could have gone down and almost did from an economic point of view. For a year after the stock market crash, America's economy teeters on the edge of the abyss. December 1930. The streets of New York are quiet. It's been a year since the stock market crash of 1929, but only 2% of the population own stocks. The other 98% get on with their lives until today. This man is about to shake America's confidence in its banks to its very core. He's put his money in his local bank, the Bank of United States, a bank that has only hours left to exist. But a newspaper article questions his bank's stability. This is the moment that begins a chain reaction that will shake the whole country's economy. Yet we don't even know the man's name. But his story was recorded by the New York Times. A small merchant in the Bronx went to a branch of the Bank of the United States and asked bank officials to dispose of his stock in the institution. Good day, sir. How may I help you? Yes, I'd like to withdraw my shares from the bank. Thank your pardon, sir. Bank regulations are virtually non-existent at the time. Bad real estate investments mean the bank has only kept itself afloat by cooking the books. Good day, sir. How may I be able to sell my shares? Well, the stock is a good investment, sir. I would advise against the sale. I want my money. The last thing the bank needs is to hand out all its cash. We almost witnessed that fairly recently, and I've seen what can go on, and I've seen travesty. He departed and apparently spread a false report that the bank had refused to sell his stock. By mid-afternoon, a considerable crowd had gathered outside the bank, estimated at between 20,000 and 25,000 persons. This is the day Worry turns to panic. Would the banks go the same way as the stock market? Hysteria spreads like wildfire. Two million dollars are withdrawn from this branch alone. Even though all the anxious depositors who asked for their money before closing time were given it, the crowd became restless. A squad of police were sent in to control them. The trouble spreads to other branches. By the next morning, the Bank of United States has collapsed. Confidence in U.S. banks disintegrates. In the last 60 days of 1930, 600 banks shut. Banks close in wave after wave across the country. By 1933, there are 28 states without a single bank open. Unlike today, the federal government does not bail out the banks. Unemployment goes from 4 million in 1930 to 12 million in 1932. Every day, a thousand homes are repossessed. 200,000 vagrant children wander the country. 34 million Americans have no source of income. 